All right, Year 10. Um, I'm going to very quickly go through uh, what we did in class the other day, which is solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Now, <clears throat> be careful of trying to do this from the textbook because the textbook does it slightly differently from the method in which uh, I will show you how to do it. The method is here and it is fine. It's a nice method, but I think it overcomplicates something which is a lot easier to do. So this is where we have quadratic equations that are soluble and um, but don't come up to be nice easy numbers. So I'm just going to do a couple of questions from five and a couple of questions from seven and that should be enough to get you through the work on the assignment. So here we go. Let's try the first one. X so this is 5a, x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals 0. Now I can't think of anything that's going to multiply out to 4 and add up to 8. So <clears throat> what I do is I take that 4 over the other side. So x squared plus 8x, I leave a space and I've got negative 4. Now what I want to do here is I want to have a perfect square. So I'll go back a touch and we need to remember that a plus b all squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So if I want to get a perfect square I have to halve this, the 2b, and square it, and that'll give it to me in there. So what I'm going to do, as I go here, I'm going to halve this and square it, and I'm going to add it to both sides. So half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Now, this whole equation is a perfect square and I can solve it or I can factorise it. So this becomes x, now you've got to remember it's a half of that 8, x plus 4 all squared. And minus 4 plus 16 is 12. Now I can just square root both sides, but remember when I square root, I get two answers. I get the positive and the negative. So I get positive and negative root 12. And I'm going to leave it as a third. Um, <clears throat> now I have to get rid of that 4, so I minus a 4, and I get x equals negative 4 plus or minus root 12. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that this is a positive parabola. It's positive because it's a positive x squared, so it's a concave up, and its roots are at minus 4, so I'll put the minus 4, minus 4, one root is minus 4, plus root 12, there you go, minus 4 plus root 12, and there's another one over here, which is at minus 4, minus 4, minus root 12, <clears throat> and I can sketch it. And if I was really smart, I'd say that that equals 4. Now, you don't need to do all that yet. You just need to be able to factorise and get this answer down here, the answer of uh, minus 4 plus or minus root 12. And you can leave it like that, or you can write minus 4 plus root 12 minus 4 minus root 12. 
in the back of the book it has minus four and it sim simplifies that root 12 is to two root three, which we can do. So I can get, I can get x equals minus four plus or minus root four root three, which equals minus four plus or minus two root three, which is what the answer is in the back. And that's all you need to be able to do. So let's have a go at another one and I won't sketch it this time, I'll just do the answer. So I'm going to do 5D and 5D is x squared minus 4x minus 14 equals 0. So the first thing you do again, you get rid of that 14. x squared minus 4x, add the 14 over, equals 14. Leave a space because what you're going to do is you're going to halve that 4, which is 2, and square it, and you're going to half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, you're going to add 4 to both sides. Now, that gives you, on the left-hand side, x minus 2, all squared. 14 plus 4 is 18. You then square root both sides. x minus 2 equals plus or minus root 18. You can simplify that, but I'm going to take the 2 over. I'm going to add 2. 2 plus or minus root 18. But I should know, and the answer in the back will say, that root 18 is the same as root 9 times root 2. And that is the same as 3 root 2. So 5D, there we go. 2 minus 3 root 2, 2 plus 3 root 2. So that's all you do. Now they're pretty easy because the, ant, the coefficient of the x is an even number. And halving that and squaring that is easy. But what happens when the coefficient of the x is not an even number? So I'm going to do 7b and 7e because they're like the ones in the assignment. So 7b, the equation is x squared plus, here it is, x squared plus 3x plus 1. x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to subtract the 1 x squared plus 3x equals negative 1. And I am going to halve and square this number here. So I'm just going to go over here a bit. 3 over 2 squared equals 9 over 4. Now can you please leave it as an improper fraction in both cases? because it's going to make it easier. So I'm going to add 9 over 4, and I'm going to add 9 over 4. <clears throat> so now I have x plus 3 over 2 squared. Again, leave it as an improper fraction. Now here, minus 1 is the same as minus 4 on 4, plus 9 on 4. You could use your calculator to do this, but good mathematicians should be right. Plus 3 on 2, all squared, equals 5 on 4. Please leave it as an improper fraction. You'll see in a minute why. Now when I square root both sides, I get x plus 3 on 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5 on 4. And you should remember from your third work that x plus 3 on 2, I can square root the top and square root the bottom, so I just leave the plus or minus out the front. Square root of 5, I'm going to leave that alone, but the square root of 4 is 2. 
And look what we have here. We have common denominators. So that's why we left it as an improper fraction. It just will happen every time. So now I'm minus the 3 on 2. So I've got minus 3 on 2 plus or minus root 5 on 2. And because I've got a common denominator, I can write it all as one fraction. Minus 3 plus or minus root 5 all over 2. And if I look at 7D, there are 7B, sorry. There it is, minus 3 plus root 5 over 2, minus 3, minus root 5 over 2. I want to do one more, one more. I want to do this one here, x squared minus x minus 3. So what was that? That was question 7e. x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Straight away, you need to know that there is a 1 there. All right? So, here we go. x squared minus x equals add the 3. Now, a half, a half of 1. Well, that's a half. All squared equals 1 over 4. So, I've got to add a quarter to both sides. Add a quarter. Add a quarter. Because it's an equation, that doesn't change it. This now becomes x minus a half, all squared. Now, 3 plus a quarter is the same as, as 12 on 4 plus 1 on 4. Now you can use your calculator to do that. x minus a half squared will equal 13 on 4. So you can do that a little bit with the calculator, but you should be good at that. Square root both sides. I get x minus a half equals plus or minus root 13 over root 4. That's another way to think about it. I get x minus a half. I don't need those brackets, so I'll just get rid of those. x minus a half equals plus or minus root 13 on 2. Now add the half across. x equals a half plus or minus root 13 on 2, common denominator, so I'll write it all as 1, 1 plus or minus root 13 on 2. Now, in the back of the book, Margaret writes that one as the two separate ones, which you can do. So you can have the 1 minus root 13 all over 2, or you can, and you can have the 1 plus root 13 all over 2, but I will accept that answer, all these answers, they're all the same, they're all right. So good luck with that, and uh, get that done by the time we come back to class next.